What's up, folks? I'm odd, by the way. So, occasionally, it's you know, not very common for me, but I do like making my own decorations for things. I think it just makes me feel powerful as an artist to be able to make things that I personally want to see and enjoy. I mean, it feels like a pretty common drive for artists, right? Just make what you don't necessarily see. <laughs> Something that's up to your, you know, specific expectations. So yeah, I'm, uh, if you've seen my other stuff, I'm not much of a traditional artist. I tend to lean toward the digital. But I do have a lot of supplies that I just kind of wind up never using because, again, digital artist. But sometimes I do get the feeling, you know, maybe it's a little guilt-ridden to, to finally make something big and nice using traditional methods. And for a few years, I've had this one piece on my wall that I made, uh, actually kind of a little fan art for The Little Prince, which is a children's book, but my personal introduction to it was the movie that came out. Uh, it was on Netflix at one point. I think I was like 17 or 18 and I watched it at like some random time. And I wasn't in a great headspace, so it really just kind of touched me, like, my heart in a really nice way, you know, about growing up. I think it was one of the things that what I was struggling with at that time, so really happy with that. And of course, I, I still love the picture, but it's been quite a few years. I don't think I made it right after I saw the movie, but it was still pretty fresh in my mind, I think, when I did make it. Maybe it had been like a year after I'd seen the movie, but that's still, that's still like two, three years ago. But yeah, regardless, it's, you know, not the best that I could probably do. And it actually has like an old tag on it that I put on because I did post the finished result online. I had just written down my, my at on the thing, but it's different than the one that I use now. It's my odd draws at, 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 my odd draws at tag. But yeah, I wanted to see that if I could maybe redraw it with my current supplies and some new, like, abilities that I feel like I picked up just in art overall in some of the traditional products that I had been using that I was- supplies that I've been using that I hoped that I'd gotten a little bit more practice. So for the first step, I did something that I, like, I, I hadn't necessarily really done before, which was I made a thumbnail digitally. So it was something that was within my comfort zone just so I could really get the idea out in a way that felt natural to me, and then try and later put it onto paper. And that felt like a good way to go about it. I love the idea from the original of like the fox and the stars. And I think that it was based off of another old art <laughs> that I had done when I initially first saw the movie. So yeah, maybe, maybe it had actually been like a year since and I was doing kind of a redraw, quote unquote, but like traditionally, because I think that the first fan art that I made was digital and it was it was a similar concept but in uh this concept i put the fox on its own little planet like a lot of the scenes in the movies i'm not totally sure if the book is different i haven't actually been able to pick it up so yeah after i got that sorted out off camera actually i took a good portion of time playing with the markers figuring out how to get these ideas that i had kind of hashed out in the digital process into my sketchbook with the supplies that i had this is another thing that I tend not to do, so it was another step in the process toward this, right? And then it was onto my floor. <laughs> so yeah, I, I taped a big old piece of drawing paper too, actually, to prevent bleed through to the linoleum floor. These these are like big two foot papers, like 24 inches by 18, I think, um, that I had left over from my old drawing class. So it's like pretty pretty decent, I think, quality paper. Odd for scale. My uh, current setup is nowhere big enough to hold these papers. Like, I think I've used them before to line my desk, just to give you an idea of how small it is. And I think I've even had to fold them up. And so yeah, it's, it's perfect. My initial setup is great for digital stuff because I just need, you know, my tablet and my laptop. And I'll, you know, just draw from there and record from there. But in this circumstance, I definitely needed, you know, a bigger area to work. I guess kind of fortunately the lack of multiple batteries for the camera and its low kind of uh, battery life. I think it was about an hour in terms of video. But yeah, it kind of forced me to take breaks like even if I was in like kind of a mood because you know sitting on the floor is not great for one's anything. Any part of your body. Back, feet, legs, anything. So 
yeah, <laughs> I got to take a good couple of breaks uh, waiting for the batteries to charge back up because they took like an hour to charge. The sketch process is probably hard to see. I'm still not totally sure if it's just completely visible or not on this camera, but I did use a pink color watercolor pencil just to sketch out, you know, the idea that I had drawn a couple of times at this point, uh, get where, an idea of where it kind of went on the paper. Uh, I think I even like kind of used my thumb to try and figure out how to position like the size of the character. I, I think I wound up making them a little bit too big in comparison to the initial like layout that I'd had of the thumbnail, but it, it still looked pretty good to me, at least at the time. See, and after that, I cracked out my collection of alcohol markers that I chose to color this. Uh, if you're sitting here and thinking, oh, that is a lot of alcohol markers. That seems like expensive to be using on a big project. It is a lot of markers. But this is kind of a, an accrual of multiple years of like gifts, uh, some stuff that was on sale, some probably questionable cheap stuff, and then maybe like the Ohuhu markers are like my own personal interest. So, and I think I actually made a video with them. But yeah, I even got some of the small markers that you'll see me trying to like use to line out this background first, which definitely went to, <laughs> definitely went kaput a little bit sooner rather than later. But I got them on Wish for possible bad spending habits and then realized that I probably don't use alcohol and markers enough to make a full review. I guess since I got a lot of experience in this whole thing, I can say they're meh. Like, honestly, they weren't that discounted either because of Wish and their weird, like, system. You know, I wanted to get, like, a certain number, but it was, like, advertised. It was, like, $13, but it was $13 for, like, two when it was showing the whole set, you know how they get. Bordering on false advertisement over Wish. The Prismacolor markers were actually a gift. I think that somebody picked them up on sale and thought of me like a huge, a huge sale. They aren't like the best. It's funny because you think of Prismacolor and you're like, well, yeah, they make, they make colored pencils, you know? But I guess you'd also think that they make pretty high quality art supplies otherwise. And I mean, they're not bad and they're definitely huge. You know, and they and they blend pretty well and stuff like that. But the colors of this particular set just don't go together for anything. You know, like there's not a lot that you can really make with them. And a lot of them are too like saturated or dark to really use in any. So the Ohuhus, which were the ones again that I kind of played, I kind of played paid full price for and are already pretty like economic markers on their own. Were actually the ones that I wound up using the least because they uh, they were a skin tone set. So I think I wound up using them for like the orange and the white of the fox and that was really about it for them. So yeah, the sacrifices made here were mainly markers that probably needed to be used or they weren't going to like ever. This in the original kind of kicked off with the same start of both kind of having the intention of being mixed media. They contain mostly like the same supplies, just a different mix. So the original was more watercolor pencils and I actually used water. I think I made it on like printing paper, like printing press paper, again from leftover art classes. But this one was more alcohol markers overall. I think I'd used a little bit of them in that because I wasn't, I still wasn't totally sure how they worked. And of course, yeah, the whole process of that background was figuring out whether or not I could even get it all colored. I started out with those cheap markers that I got on Wish and uh, <laughs> they're tiny. So they didn't really do much and then I got, I cracked out the Prismacolor set and I realized that they had almost identical colors. So I started using those and it was a lot easier because those things, like I said, they're massive. They're just big chonky markers. But this is when like the chaos of my organization started to kind of seep onto the floor. Like I, I think throughout this, I started pulling out more and more supplies and like bringing them over the, the cases and stuff like that to attempt to keep them contained but also like they started spreading everywhere and you'll definitely see just the, my little horde my little collection growing around me as i start working further on in the picture and of course the fox the character is a big focal point but it was still pretty straightforward kind of stylized what i really wanted to focus on were the stars and i had this really like cool vision i thought for them and i wanted them to look really nice like really kind of valuable, like magical, you know? So yeah, in the end, I wound up using kind of a hybrid of alcohol and watercolor, alcohol markers and watercolor pencils, which is something that I've actually done before when using these. And it feels like maybe something that I might keep doing 
in the future, I guess. It's, it just seems like where I tend to lean. Maybe it's just because I'm impatient, but I was trying basically to get a nice blend of a specific color that I wanted and it wasn't coming out of the colors of alcohol markers that I had. So I drew over the areas that I wanted to be green of the stars. I wanted them to kind of look like glow in the dark with like a turquoise pencil and then went over it again with the yellow marker that I had used to line the bottom and it created this nice like greenish turquoise color that looked really nice. And obviously like I would go back and kind of swipe off the marker and make sure that I wasn't getting too much excess pigment on it. Still not totally sure whether or not it ruins them. I mean, it still seems to work fine, so win there, but probably not the best practice for it. I mean, it works. <laughs> no such thing as wasting art supplies, I guess, when you're using a method that works with you. It was funny because my initial intention was to go in and make this less experimental than the original one, which I kind of just went ham on and worked until I got something that I kind of liked. This one, I was going to attempt to make it a bit more streamlined and then it became more and more experimental to the point that it, it got to the degree of like, it's gonna look worse before it looks better. It's gonna look worse before it looks better. <laughs> Thankfully, I did practice and my practice came to fruition, but at the same time, I hadn't tried to draw out the whole thing in my sketchbook, it was just parts of it. So putting them together and then figuring out other ways to kind of work on this as I went along. What I tend to do anyway is I dive into something straight in and without any knowledge of it and I just kind of go. So that makes sense. Thankfully, I have either the patience or the stubbornness to see it out until it looks fairly. At some point, I also realized, again, with the whole experimental thing, that I hadn't really attempted the gold grass that I kind of drawn in the thumbnail with my markers. So I was trying to figure that out in my sketchbook at one point. And yeah, I think I got a nice kind of flowy look to it, tried to make it look nice and like gold and shiny. And uh, I don't know if it looked necessarily grassy. It kind of looked like a yellow fire to me. At least it doesn't look 100% like hair anymore. For a while, I think especially with like the brown underlines, it started to look like a Muppet planet. <laughs> So yeah, like I said, gonna look worse before it looks better. I think that if there was a thing I was going to change about it, I wanted the fox to look stylized, obviously, and sort of a hybrid between the physical fox and the toy that, again, was present in the movie. I don't know if it was present in the book. And I wanted his head to be big. That cute little peanut head that I drew in the sketchbook was my idea. But it, is still, it looks a little too big compared to the body for me now. Like, if I made this as a digital piece, I would probably have played with the size of the head and I tend to do that a lot when I draw, so it's definitely something I should probably look into. I just make my head too big. I should think about that. But then I probably start overcompensating and making them too small. It's, it's a never-ending struggle. <laughs> yeah, and overall, I really do like it. I think that's basically it for the whole process of this. And wait, I almost forgot to film the tape peel. Oh my god. I actually did. I almost forgot to film the tape peel, like, turned off the camera and everything. And it's like, geez, Odd, what are you, a monster? Okay, that's better. <laughs> now, according to the original time frame for all of the clips of this video, the process took, including the digital thumbnailing, about three hours and 40 minutes. But that doesn't take into account the two times that I had to change the camera's battery, the practice, the setup, any other thinking, pre-planning that I had to do. So overall, I think that this was closer to six hours. I started in the afternoon and ended at night, like late. I really do like the way that the finished result turned out. I think that overall, you know, my approach to this has definitely gotten better. Even if I hadn't practiced as much with traditional elements, I think that I had a bit of a better approach to using things that I wasn't as used to than I did when I made the other one. But the other one is more free flow and I do still like it. I, I like that I put more effort into like the thumbnailing and the sketching and I feel like it looks a bit more like a piece than it's just kind of like floating there. Surprisingly, actually, the paper didn't bleed through to the protective page very much, despite all the torture that I put it through. Uh, the back bleed looks really cool, though. Basically, the whole piece, again, in reverse. And yeah, the old version is still really cute, you know? And they're definitely very different styles. I don't know if I would want to try and do this again and adapt it to look a bit more of like the storybook-esque nature that the other one took on. It was very pastel, twilighty. I don't know if that was my 
total intention with it, but that's how it turned out and I didn't mind it. Regardless, it'll be good to have something new on my wall with a little bit more of like, I guess a galaxy vibe for, you know, after a couple of years of staring at the same piece that I was kind of like, eh. So, you yeah. know, which of the two do you like? Let me know, uh, because, you know, I don't know. I like hearing people's opinions on that sort of thing. And it might be important in the future. Who knows? But other than that, I will see y'all next time.